great everyone. So I am Dr. Tushar Mehta. I am an orthopedic surgeon and a faculty of orthopedics at uh, Delhi Academy of Medical Sciences DAMS. So the purpose of coming out with this video is basically to make you understand that you know there is always an art of solving an MCQ. So let's talk about that art. Before I you know give you that art and the details of that art, I want you to understand what an MCQ is all about. You have to be careful in listening to me. Multiple choice question is an objective representation of a subjective condition which has to be answered within a finite period of time. You get around 45-50 seconds to solve an MCQ. Now in that 45-50 seconds you have to read that MCQ, you have to uh, uh, remember the topic from where this MCQ has been asked, you have to uh, go back to that topic, you have to go back to your notes, you have to recollect what you have written and you know what happens is that you kind of waste a lot of time in that particular effort. I would say that uh, it has to be in, in, in your spinal reflexes, it has to be a part of your spinal reflexes. That is possible only if you read a couple of things and then revise them again and again. So trying to uh, bite what more you know that then you can chew. I think that is not going to help you. So you have to keep yourself in limit while giving the first reading. There are certain MCQs which are direct, which will require a one-liner knowledge of fact-based MCQ. You have to just apply a fact and get away with that. There are certain MCQs which require concept, and not only concept, but apart from that, that requires application of that concept. So today we will solve one MCQ which requires not only a concept, but we have to apply that as well. So this is a question, I'm sure you can read that, and then there are four options. Now, what I've seen in my you know, experience of almost about a decade of uh, teaching to the PG aspirants is that uh, normally a PG aspirant, whenever he or she is sitting uh, you know, on that day, 10 day of exam, there are a lot of anxiety, a lot of uh, nervousness and everything is there. And I see majority of the students, what they do is they read the question, the statement of the question in complete. I'll again put it out for you. Like somebody is nervous and he's reading out or she's reading it out. A 22 year old young male college student suffer from left knee injury. Now when they hear the left knee injury, they're like, okay, fine, orthopedics, anatomy, knee. Okay, while well, playing hockey, okay, well, after two months there was an anterior laxity in full extension. It was normal and 90 degree flexion. Now they're recapitulating orthopedics, knee, ligament. Uh, yeah, in that notebook, in that register, I have written that, you know, I had written that topic with some blue color, I had underlined it with some uh, red color and, and I had put some fluorescent marker on that during revision, but what was under that marker, I don't recall now. So there's a lot of confusion going on. And before reading the statement of the question again, now the student in a haste is going to read all the options. Anteromedial bundle of anterior cruciate ligament, posterior lateral bundle of anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament, anterior pile of middle meniscus. And now, you know, everything is in a mess. Because I feel that there are two types of students. One who read the question, read the options and then read the question. These kind of students, they never succeed. What kind of students will succeed? Those who read the question, they read it again. They make, a, they make a fixed motion out of it that, okay, fine, this is in my memory, yes, this is what I remember, yes, this is something applies to this, yes, this was a concept, yes. Now they read the options. So rather than reading the options twice, my suggestion is always to read the question twice because answer is, it would sound very ironical to you, but answer is not in the option, answer is in the question. Are you able to understand my point? So this is something really important. And <clears throat> and I think that, you know, we all should agree to this, that answer, options are there to deceive you, options are there to delay your uh, decisive capabilities. Anyhow, uh, now I have read the question. Now what I know is that, that there is something called as anterior cruciate ligament. And certainly students, I know this, that anterior cruciate ligament is not a single ligament, it is further composed of two bundles. I'm sure all of you can appreciate one is this anterior medial bundle in front of you and one is a posterior lateral bundle, AMB anterior medial bundle, PLB posterior lateral bundle. Again, you can see an anterior medial bundle and you can see a posterior lateral bundle. Why they have given you these two images, I can give you that explanation. This is that image in which knee is in 90 degree flexion and this is the image in which knee is in complete extension. 
so what you must have understood by now you must have understood by now that if your knee is in 90 degree flexion these two bundles they are kind of crossing each other i'm sure you can make it out but when your knee is in complete extension they are kind of you know parallel to each other so they these bundles cross each other when knee is in 90 degree flexion but these bundles are parallel to each other they are parallel to each other when knee is in complete extension now what i want all the students here to remember is that anterior cruciate ligament what is the job of anterior cruciate ligament if this is femur this is tibia its job is to make sure that tibia is not excessively translated anteriorly the only job of anterior cruciate ligament is to ensure that there is no excess anterior translation of tibia with respect to femur. But this job is performed by these two bundles in different positions. Let us say, for example, there is a bundle called as anteromedial bundle. All right, we have spoken about it. There is another bundle that is what is called as posterolateral bundle. So you have AMB, you have PLB. Now the interesting part is that this job of ACL, that is to prevent anterior translation of tibia with respect to femur, if your knee is in 90 degrees of flexion, this job will be performed by which bundle? Anteromedial bundle. So which bundle is going to be taut, tight, contracted? This one. Which is going to be relaxed? This one. Are you able to understand my point? ACL has got a job. That job is performed by anteromedial bundle when knees in 90 degree flexion. It is performed by posterior lateral bundle when knees in complete extension. Now this knee is in let us say complete extension. Now when knee is in complete extension, what I want you to remember is that this bundle will be that this bundle will be relaxed and this bundle will be taut. So if your knee is in 90 degree flexion then this is the chief bundle if your knee is in complete extension then this this is the chief bundle this is how these bundles perform and one anatomical difference we have already spoken about when the knee is in 90 degree flexion they will cross when knee goes into complete extension they become parallel now if you look at this mcq so this is a concept that you remember this is a concept that you have recalled when you see this mcq in a volume of 300 questions now if you recall this entire thing this line is just a waste a waste, a waste, a waste. Now, till this moment, everything does not matter at all. I mean, okay, fine. This is to give you an idea that we are talking about knee. Now, there is an anterior laxity in full extension. So what does that mean? That when knee is in extension, there is anterior laxity. So that means ACL is not working. Now, whose job was to ensure that knee is working or ACL is working in complete extension? Whose job was that? Come on, say it with me, everyone. Whose job was that to ensure that ACL is working with knee in full extension? Whose job was that to ensure that when knee is in complete extension, ACL is working? It was a job of posterior lateral bundle. But is it performing its job? No, it is not performing its job. Why? Because is there anterior laxity? Say yes or no? Yes. So that means which bundle is torn? One thing is clear that posterior lateral bundle is torn. Anyhow, read further. And it was normal and 90 degree flexion. So when knee is in 90 degree flexion, there is no anterior laxity. So that means which bundle is doing its job. So anterolateral bundle, anteromedial bundle is intact. Anteromedial bundle is intact because when knee is in 90 degree flexion, it is normal. When knee is in complete extension, there is anterior laxity. So posterolateral bundle is too. Does that make sense to you? So answer is not this, answer is not this, answer is not this, answer is this. Are we able to get this? Everyone, yes or no? So guys, in this video, I wanted to talk to you about understanding that solving an MCQ is an art. It's not a single simple art. There are different ways to it. One is that you should recall the concept and apply the concept. Okay. I will be coming up with one more video in which I will be telling you how to recall the facts and apply those facts. But in that, you have to be very good in recalling the facts. So all in all, I will come to the summary again. Read, remember, revise, retain, rank. I've got my point. I'll repeat it for you. Read as much as you can. Revise as much as you can. Okay. Retain as much as you can. Try to remember as much as you can that will give you the rank. So read, remember, revise, retain. And that means a lot of recall as possible only if you get the 
read, remember, revise, retain, correct. Solve MCQs, keep solving questions, dance question bank. Uh, that's the best thing to have happened. I never had this kind of a question bank in my days. I wish I had. It has the most authentic questions and feel free to ask any queries. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Tushar Mehta. I will be coming up with one more art of solving one more MCQ very soon. Thank you.